Today's video is less of a tutorial and more of an update video to a very in-depth tutorial that I did recently on how to build a front-end dashboard for your users. In there, we covered quite a few different things, but there were still a couple of little omissions from the software that we were using. Well, in the update that I'm going to show you today, most of those have been addressed. There's still a lot more to come in the future, and the developer who I'm sort of talking to pretty much every single day has assured me there are a ton of really cool and exciting things coming soon. So keep an eye on this because I will be showing you as those key updates come out. But today, we're going to be taking a look at the pro version, and most of these are available in the free version of ACF Frontend for Elementor. So this allows you to create front-end forms, link them through to normal post types, pages, user information, and also things like custom post types using ACF. There's a ton of options. I'll put a link to that detailed video down below, and also the video I did recently on the free version of this, so you can really see exactly what you can do with these plugins. Let me just show you what this new update is and why I think it's definitely worth taking you through and showing you what's been updated. So for anyone that didn't see that video, let me just quickly show you the dashboard that we created in there. It's a personalized dashboard, so whenever you log in, you'll have your profile picture if it's associated with you alongside the name that you've logged in with. Then we've got a nice custom dashboard that allows us to add posts, edit our posts, custom posts like vehicles, we can go through and we can contact our developer, or if we are the developer, we can set up nice forms that our end user, our clients, can easily get in touch with us directly from their custom dashboard. We also had some things like global options for the theme, so things like your logo and so on. You could edit your own profile, but now we can go through and we can do a lot more things with both our profile and editing and adding users in. So I want to just quickly show you that first of all, and then we're going to come back and take a look at some of the other options. So if I come in at the moment and take a look at your profile, for example, you can see we've got our username, which can't be changed, our password, email, first name, and so on. So these are all pretty useful things. One of the things that I wanted to see, though, was where we're going to change our password. I wanted to make sure that there was a sort of a field set up inside there that would confirm that both password passwords are exactly the same. It's otherwise, it's very easy to make a mistake, update your password, and then you've got the wrong password details because you typed something a little wrong. So let's take a look at now how we can set things up so we can confirm and just check those passwords against each other and also make sure that we set the minimum level of security we want associated with that password. So people can't put things like password, one, two, three, and all those kinds of silly things. So this is, again, really useful from a security point of view, just by forcing your users to make sure they use a much more secure password. So inside our dashboard, here's our profile page. And you can see it's exactly the same as we've just seen on the front end. At the moment, again, like I say, we've only got the option for one password. If we select this now and come back into the Edit ACF Front End Form panel on the left-hand side, and we come down to User, inside there, we've got some extra options. We now have Confirm and Force Strong. If we enable that, you can see that now gives us a confirmation password entry area. So if anybody changes their password, they have to put it in twice. We can also set the minimum password strength that's going to be used. Now, I would always recommend that you set this to be strong, and that way you just ensure that anybody that updates their password or when you're creating a new user, they have a very good, strong, and secure password to minimize hacking potential. So that's just one simple little thing, but it does make a big, big difference. So we'll update that. We'll come back over into our profile section, and we'll refresh our page. We'll reload this. And you see now we have our confirmation password. and It'll tell us how strong it actually is. And if it's not strong enough, it won't let us proceed. So that's the first thing. Like I say, that's pretty simple and straightforward. Let's take a quick look now at how we could create an add new user section to enhance our dashboard. I've gone ahead to save time and created the blank page that's going to be set up for our add in a user. All we need to do now is come in and front, search for front end form and we'll drag and drop that into our design. And I've already set up the styling, so I'm just simply going to right click and paste our style so it picks up the design that we've got. So we've now got a blank entry section. And as you can see, it just says edit post, which isn't what we want to do. So we're going to come over to actions and we're going to change this from edit post to new user. Once we do that, you can see it pulls in the basic information, the username, single password, and the email address. But we can change this if we want to. We can add a lot more inside there. We can also do things like setting up the redirect after submit, whether we want to reload, custom URL, new post, etc. I'm going to set this to be reload the page, and we can say we can come in and just change this, say new user added. So that's that. 
We don't want to worry about the fields because we're not linking this through to any custom fields that are part of ACF. However, if you were doing that and you wanted to set up some custom additional custom fields specific for your users, you could do that and then link them inside this dashboard. For this example, we're going to keep it straightforward and just jump straight to the user section. Now you can see it says user settings and we've got new user role. So when you create a new user, this is going to specify exactly what role they're going to take on. So you can see we can set that to be anything we want. I would leave it a subscriber for this example. We can come in and say hide WordPress admin area. So we're going to say yes, we want to do that. So they can't get into the dashboard of WordPress. They can only use their custom dashboard that we've created. Managing user, you can see we can choose different things like how we want to search and filter this. We're going to leave that out because this is a new user that's going to be created. Now when we come down underneath, you can see we've got user fields. We've got default username field, password field, email address field. So this is going to use the default ones. However, if you wanted to, you could map these through to custom advanced custom fields fields. However, like I say, we just want to create a normal user with the normal details. So confirm and force strong password. So once we check that, we get the same as before. We now get a second confirm password option. We can set our password strength to be strong and we can now come down and choose any other options that we want and whether we want to make them sort of mandatory or not. Now you can see we've got email field, first name, second name. Let's just set those to be default values in there. So someone puts in the relevant details, the bio. Well, most people probably don't even fill that in. Now, if you're creating users for your website itself, so let's just say you are the only person that's allowed or any administrator is allowed to create new users. You can also enable the role field. So we'll say default role field. And what that'll do is now it'll add a new section at the bottom, which drops down and lists all the different roles that are associated with your website. Now, if you've got something like WooCommerce installed, you will have extra roles inside here, like shop owner and stuff like that. So you can add those in as well. And it'll automatically be pulled in based upon what you've got installed on your website. So all those things are in place. If we come down to the permissions option, we can now control who can access this page. And this is the important thing. We need to make sure only the relevant people can access and do anything we want inside here. So who can see this? Only logged in users. So you have to be logged in to be able to even come into this. Then we can specify what role is required to be able to access and use this particular function. As I said, we're going to keep this to administrators only, so we can leave that set to admin. We can even go down and select by specific user. So you may have multiple admins, but you may want to restrict this to a specific group of admins or an individual while well, you could do that. However, for me, I'm going to take that out because I only want to use administrators and not filter anything else. Underneath, we've got dynamic selection. And again, you've got things like post author, which will dynamically filter the data based upon criteria like the role of the post author being logged in. It's not really relevant to what we're doing here, though. WP uploader, whether you use the normal WordPress uploader for any fields that allow you to upload, not really relevant for us right now. Submissions, well, we're not going to worry too much about that because this isn't a submission based upon like content. This is a user thing, so it's not really that important. Display options, this is where you can do things like you can show this in a modal window and so on, and you can control exactly how this is laid out and works. Okay, so that's the basics of this done. What we could also, also do is come into the action setting, and we can come in there and we can set this to send emails. So if you had multiple administrators and you may want to notify everybody or a specific user if there was a new user added, then you could set that up. Once we select the submit action as emails, you can see we now have a new entry section underneath that allows us to create a custom email that will be sent out with whatever data you want to use inside it. If we add an item, you can see we can set up the email name to CC, BCC, email addresses from reply to, and all those kinds of things. So you could set this up however you want. For this example, I'm just going to take that back out so we don't want to use that. And we'll update the page. And we now have a new section. So we come back up into our dashboard. We'll come back to the main dashboard itself. From there, I'll just refresh this to make sure everything is in place. So there's our new user section. So if we click on add a new user, that now takes us into this relevant section where we can go in and create our new user with a username, password, making sure that a strong password is used and so on. So again, it's one of those things, it's a pretty cool addition to this. Now, another key addition to this plugin is the ability to start working with drafts. Now, if you're creating new content, you've got users that log into their custom dashboard, create content. They don't always want to do all of the work there and then. Sometimes they may want to save a draft and then come back and make changes and finish it up later on. Well, now we can do that and it's super simple to do. 
I've come into the custom section which allows me to create and submit new vehicles. So this is linked through to advanced custom fields, but it doesn't matter any of these front end forms, no matter what data you're putting in, can have it set up to save drafts. So as at the moment, you can see we've got all the normal data inside there with no options for drafts. To enable this, we simply come over to the left hand side and open up the post section. If we scroll down, you can see we've got show saved draft selection and save as draft option. If we check the second option, you can see we now get a new button that says save as draft. We can change this to whatever text that we want. We can even link it through the dynamic tags. We can drop in a description underneath if we want to tell people what they need to do. But at the moment, this just saves it as a draft. What we also want to do is check the option that says show saved draft selection. Once I enable that, we now get a new draft option that allows us to see and list and just go in and select any of the drafts that we've created. So it's super simple to enable. And I'm just going to hit the update on there. And then we're going to jump over to the dashboard and take a quick look at what this looks like on the front end. Okay, so I'm back into the user dashboard. We're going to come into the add vehicle option. Now I've already created a draft so we're going to see how this works we're going to come into the add vehicle and as you can see it's a blank form now as you'd expect to add a new vehicle in if we scroll to the bottom we've got the save a draft button and we've got the edit a draft option if i click on there you can see we've got new post which is the default and underneath that i've got a post that i previously created so i'm going to click on that you'll see that now refreshes and all of the data from that draft post including the title any description, featured image, and all those kinds of things are immediately pulled into this particular post. I could now continue working on this until I'm ready. And if I wanted to, I could save that draft a second time and it would overwrite and update the existing or the original one with all the details. It tells us the time, the date, and everything else we need to see exactly what's going on. So let me just show you what I'm talking about. You could a new post. This time we're gonna create another new post. So we're gonna just come in and we'll just say, just BMW, it doesn't really matter what one it is. And we'll just put in some details, so this description, and just quickly drop in some other details. So we've got everything there now. If I hit save as draft, as opposed to add new, that'll save that new draft. Once that's done, we scroll to the bottom, open that up, you can see we've got the BMW they just created and the Blue Dynamics M Sport BMW that I created previously. So I can click on whichever one I want. It'll reload those details. You can see there's, there's the first one, and if we just choose the other one, you can see this is the one I just created. So it's a super simple way of working. And then once you're finished, you can click on add new. And then however you set things up, whether it's going to be saved as a, as a draft, whether it's going to be saved as a pending approval, all those kinds of things, all that's still in place for you. So for me, those are the two takeaway key things that I wanted to see and just wanted to show you. So if you followed along with the previous tutorial on create your own custom dashboard, or you're just interested in creating these front end form submission tools, these new updates I think are really, really useful and something that opens up even more possibilities of what is already a powerful and very, very easy to use plugin. Well, as always, all the applicable links are in the description below. You can check those out. If you want to grab the pro version, it's an affiliate link, so you do give a small percentage back to the channel, but it doesn't cost you a single penny more. However, the free version has a ton of options inside there. So if you just want to test it out, see what it can do, and if you want those pro features, then grab the pro version, but the free version has a ton available in it for nothing, not so Well, as always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.